Church of Joliet, Illinois, where God loves you and so do we. We are blessed that you are joining us today, whether in person or online, and we hope that this worship service blesses you as well. If you're in person, make yourself at home. You may have come as a visitor, but you will leave as family. If you're watching online, don't feel left out as we encourage you to participate in service by voicing your praise in the chat sections on Facebook, YouTube, and our website at www.mountzionjoliet.org. After service is over, we hope you stay connected. Mount Zion has been a voice of the Joliet area community for over 76 years and continues to do so through charitable work outreach. Mount Zion is home to children, teens, young adults, professionals, seniors, business owners, students, and retirees. No matter where you are, Mount Zion is home for you. Mount Zion proudly holds Jesus' command to love your neighbor as yourself to heart. We are here to serve you. Morning, we believe through God's grace, if you are hungry, morning, you will be fed. If you are helpless, you will leave hopeful. If you are lonely, you will be found. And if you are hurt, you will be healed. If you have any prayer requests or personal requests, you may email them to pastor at mountzionjoliet.org or contact our church office at 815-723-9445. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember, Mount Zion loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. I ain't gonna make it shine. I'm just gonna let it shine, let it shine. I ain't gonna make it shine. I'm just gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. I tell you the reason why. morning for our devotional reading. I'm going to be reading from the 92nd Psalm. It's a good thing to give thanks to God. 
and to sing praises to his name. O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on, on instruments of ten strings, on the lyre, on the harp, and with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your works. I will triumph in the works of your hand, O oh Lord, and I will, and how great you are and your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked springs up like grass, and when all the works of his iniquity fail, it is that they may be destroyed forever. But, but you, Lord, are on high forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. the Lord everybody. How we doing today? Has God been good to you? Did he wake you up this morning? Did he wake? Did he give you joy in your spirit? We are alive, he's stone, right? Let's give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We come in this room this day, Lord, for you to pour out your spirit upon us, Father. We welcome you into the service today. We ask you just to come in and bless. Move around the room, God. Heal every wound, God. Be with us today, God. Lord, you know the need of your people, God. Pour out your spirit in this place, God. Lord, help the pastor today preach the word, God. That, Lord, souls be healed, God. That they come into your presence, God. We need you right now, Jesus. Help us, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Find every Every demon, God, in the name of Jesus, everything that's not like you, God, we cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, Father, every manners of disease, every heartbreak, God, we cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need you, God, every hour, every moment of the day, Lord. Help feel your presence in this place, Lord. Meet the need of your people, God, and we'll give you honor, glory, and praise, Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Lord, we thank you just for this day. Um, we are going to have, hold on one second. Okay. Okay. The man's choir. Go. good days and I've had some hills to climb I've got some weary days and lonely, lonely, lonely man. But when I look around and I am all of my goodness, they ain't afraid my bad. I, I 
here to welcome. Do we have any first time visitors here? Could you please like stand and wave your hand? Let us know you're in the house. Amen, so glad you're here. Well, if you have time, our pastor, Pastor Curtis Bryan, Dr. Curtis Bryan, would love to greet you after service. Um, you're no longer our visitor anymore. We are so glad you came to worship with us, and we hope that you enjoy yourself. All right, All right guys, it's a time for hopefully everybody could um, take a part in. We're going to do our offering and have our announcements before we hear the blessed man of God. I think the choir is coming back one more time after offering. So I always say we're going to have our offering. Put a purpose on your offering so you know that God knows your heart and what you're asking for or what you're in need of. I'm sorry, I'm a little under the weather today. Uh, we're going to pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, thank you for the um, all those that have to give. God bless those that are... Um, don't have to give, but we actually look on their seat and look on their heart, God. Find, uh, give us increase for everything that we give to you. Give back to us a hundredfold, Lord. We thank you for it in advance, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, you have, we have three ways to give um, in person. We have, you can text and cash app. are your weekly announcements. Easter experience rehearsals have begun. Actors will meet Monday, March 18th, Tuesday, March 19th, and Wednesday, March 20th at 6 p.m. Praise dancers will rehearse on Saturday, March 23rd at 9 a.m. The College Career and STEM Fair will be Saturday, April 27th. Stay tuned for more information. The Baptist General Pearl B. Singleton 2024 Retreat will be held on March 21st through the 23rd in East Peoria, Illinois. Lebanon District Women's Auxiliary is sponsoring a project that will provide gift cards to Guardian Angel Community Services here in Joliet. As one of Lebanon's sister churches and the church home of Sister Pearl B. Singleton, we are asking members to participate by donating gift cards in the amount of your choice from a store of your choice. Suggested stores are Walmart, Target, Dollar Tree, Amazon, CVS, Walgreens, and Aldi. Donated gift cards may be purchased and dropped off in the church office, or monetary donations may be provided. Checks should be made payable to Mount Zion Baptist Church in our Lebanon Project in the memo section. The deadline is today to donate. Hey, I got a question for you. What are you doing on Easter? Listen, Easter has always been for me the day that family would all get together and connect. Of course, you got to go to church and you got to hear the greatest story ever told, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This year, I want to personally invite you to connect with your Zion family right here in Joliet. And I want you to experience Easter. Because listen, nobody does Easter quite like Mount Zion. Because you won't just hear the story, you're going to experience it like never before. And I promise you won't be the same. We have something for everybody. So please, if you listen to this, Come. Look, if it's been a long time since you've been here, come on home. If it's your first time, please come. And I don't even care how you come. Come in your three-piece suit, have your big hat on if you need to, or come in jeans and a jersey. It doesn't matter. Just make your way down here. We have a one service on Sunday, March the 31st, 10 a.m. Just make sure you're here. Make sure you're here to experience Easter. Something for everybody, and you won't be the same. So I'm going to see you. Come on, be family. Come on, connect with Zion, and come experience Easter. I see you there. Those will conclude the announcements. Thank you for your attention. And remember, Zion loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a blessed week.
say it's part of the say There just ain't one there just ain't one, there just ain't one weapon, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there just ain't one, there just ain't one, no, 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 no.
single weapon formed against you. There just ain't one. There just ain't one. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. God never said that the weapon would not be formed. He never said that you would not feel it. He never implied that it would not hurt. But what God has said to us is not a single weapon will prosper against you. Y'all don't know when to praise God. That means God is saying not a single weapon. Not a single trick or trap of the enemy will ever have his way against you, have your way against your family, have its way against what God has in store for you, your destiny, your future. God said not a single weapon formed against you is going to stop you because the power, the love, and the grace of God will cover you, will keep you and sustain you no matter what the enemy tries to throw at you. And I just want to encourage somebody who showed up this morning, if you know, if you look back over your life and over all the times the enemy tried to set you back or keep you from moving forward, you look at God and say, God, I thank you because everything that's come my way has not kept me from your love. It's not separated me from my destiny. It's not forbidden me from moving forward closer to my promise. I dare somebody to give God praise this morning. If you believe God has kept you from all the traps, all the tricks, and all the tools of the enemy, go on and lift your hands in this There's place. Just one, no. If you believe there hasn't been a single one. No, 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 no. There's just not one. Not one blessing, no. God said there's not one, no, not one. One blessing. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Not one blessing, no, no. Not a single one. Not a single one. Oh, the man. Just ain't one. Give God praise. 
Family, y'all gotta forgive us. We just gotta deviate from the program. I know we Baptists, we like to stick to an order of service, but I tell you every once in a while, just forgive us if we step aside for just a moment and just worship God the way we want to worship God. Is that all right, y'all? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Real quick, can we just praise God for the men's choir who showed up with their boots on this morning? They showed up for work today. <laughs> how proud I am, how blessed we are. We are a blessed church, Zion. Yes, we are. Amen. Amen. Let all God's people say amen. Amen. Family, um, there is a word from the Lord on today. I'm going to get to it in just one moment, but I did want to quickly reiterate an announcement that was shared a few moments ago, two actually, that we definitely want your attention on and we need your help with. The first actually comes in by way of combination for some of you who just may have gotten a text message a few moments ago. You see, as you all are aware, our youth ministry is planning for a, what we call a college career and STEM fair. We're planning to host at the end of April, you know, making sure, uh, barring anything unforeseen happens between now and then. But our goal right now in our preliminary work is to know what kind of gifts we have in the house. And so I want to encourage everybody, if you got that text, message a moment ago. If you are a professional, if you are, are employed, if you are a college grad, if you are an adult who can let us know about your college experience or have connections to get young people, young adults in pla placed in different jobs and uh, different capacities, then we want to hear from you. We want you to click on that link. It's going to take you literally a minute to do it. It's only five questions, all right? Um, and just to let us know about your experiences and, and let us know who we have in the congregation we can call on and get the help with this endeavor. Also, we want to encourage our students, our high school students, to click on that same link because there's five questions there for you to fill out. You don't have to fill them out at the same time. Um, but click on that link and let us know what you are interested in, what you are looking to do with your life. Because our goal is to host this career, college, and STEM fair and partner you up with somebody in the place that you want to go. We want to ensure that we can mentor people and make sure you get your foot in the door and have your name already in lights by the time you get your degree or walk across that stage. It doesn't matter what level you're in as far as being a high school student or a college student. And in addition to that, we want to make sure this is a successful gathering for even our junior high students because what you all may not know, and I share with you now, is that this year, Mount Zion, we are planning to uh, create a robotics team for our students and for our community because, believe it or not, robotics and programming and AI, that is the wave of the future. And I dare not let any of my kids in my community be left behind because of lack of access. You know, my daughter has been involved in robotics for the last three years by way of her school. And I noticed at the competitions, it ain't a whole lot of us out there, you all. And it's because we don't have a lot of schools that offer any programming courses, anything like this. And we are going to change that. So we have already partnered with Natalie Coleman and her group after the peanut. We got a coach already who was waiting for us to just pull the kids together. And I need to make sure this thing is successful, okay? And it's not just for us. It's for our community as well because our community needs this kind of access. Amen. So this is what we're doing. This is happening. This is happening. So I need your help. We need your help to make sure this thing happens. If you got a text message, please fill that out after service is over. It won't take you long at all. If you did not get a text message, please go to our, our website, www.mountzionjoliet.org. There's a link that's right there on the home page that you just click on, and it will let you fill out this five-question survey. And that's all we're asking for. More details about the event are on the way. Then lastly, uh, I do share this with you. Um, this week, you know, on Tuesday, you know, we're getting ready for our Easter experience. There has been a change to our calendar. This year, we're only going to have one service at 10 a.m. 
um, where we invited everybody, all of our Zion family to come. We're a little challenged this year with our facilities. We won't be able to have that break in the middle with our Easter breakfast that we so love to do, um, but it's all right. Come this time next year, we're going to be all good. But this year, only one service family. So show up at 10 a.m. Don't come at 7 or 7.30. You can. I just won't be here with you. You so you certainly can come, but amen. Uh, just pray for us until we get here. 10 a.m. On, uh, on March the 31st, that Sunday is our Easter experience, and I can't wait. And for those who still want to get involved, I believe we may have some room with the drama. We need some help getting our set together. Uh, we definitely want our dancers to come out rehearsals every Saturday at 9 a.m. Dancers, I need you all to be here. And so that we can make sure you got your steps because we want to add some elements and make sure this thing is tight, it's right, and it's all done to the glory of God. Amen. All right. Once again, uh, please, please, if you have any questions, see me at the service. I'll, I'll, I'll happily indulge anything you may have on your mind. And once again, there is a word from the Lord on today as we continue this series that's titled, Do This in Remembrance of Me. Right now, we're taking a hard look at all the things that Jesus taught us right before the last breath that he gave us and when he gave up the ghosts. We are thinking about the things and studying the things that God wants us to remember him by and then do as we remember him. This morning, I want to invite you to the Gospel of Luke chapter 23. And today we're going to be reading verses 39 through 43. Please join me there. If you are able-bodied, please stand to your feet as we reverence the reading of God's word. Luke 23, 39 through 43. Please find it in your Bibles, find it in your devices, or find it on the screens provided for you. If you got it, say amen. And if you don't, just tell me to wait a minute. I'll wait for you. And the word of God reads as such. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly. For we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. As you prepare to take your seat, I do want to invite you to find a neighbor on your left or right and give them this title and topic. Tell them, neighbor. Yeah. Jesus says, Jesus says confess, confess for me. Amen. Confess for me. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Confess for me. Amen. Family, the story is told of this traveler who made it his business to travel the world and take as many pictures as he could of himself while he's visiting these many different destinations. Now, during one of his stops in an Asian country, he came across this street vendor. And the street vendor had painted the most beautiful pictures that you would ever see. They were so precise. They were so accurate. And one thing about his gift is that he would do these wonderful grand pictures in less than five minutes. All you had to do was give him the money, give him five minutes, and bam, you have a work of art in front of you. You can make requests of whatever, and he would do it and deliver in five minutes. This particular traveler was so intrigued by what was advertised, so he came and gave this man some money and then gave him his request. He said, Mr. Painter, can you please paint me and paint me standing in front of the most grand and vast mountain in all of Asia? And the painter performed just as advertised. Five minutes later, this man produced a painting, a beautiful work of art for this traveler. Now, things take a little turn right here, family, because as soon as the traveler saw what he had paid for, he angrily shouted at the painter. He said, I can't believe you did this to me. I want my money back. He, he, the painter right there asked, okay, well, well what's the matter? And the traveler told him, I, just, just look at my face. Look at all the wrinkles that I have. Look at all the extra weight that you put on me in this picture. 
I ain't got no problem with the mountains. I got the problem with me. Why did you do this to me? The painter said, well, sir, I'm sorry to say this to you, but uh, this thing looked just like you. <laughs> the man then responded. He said, I don't agree. I don't agree this thing looks like me. I don't know why. You, this looks absolutely terrible. It doesn't do me justice. And finally, the painter said him, to him, sir, what you need ain't justice. What you need is mercy. <laughs> Have you seen yourself lately, sir? You, you're asking for something that you don't deserve. You don't need justice, man. You need mercy. And family, in the spirit of the painter, I need to ask this question of all the saints who have been saved by grace. Have you seen yourself lately? Because <laughs> see, because see, you look, I should have started off saying this. Y'all ain't going to like this message this morning. It's not, it's not going to shout you. It's, it's not about what you're going to get, a new house, a new boo, a new spouse. I ain't got that for you this morning, family. We, we got a hard message today, okay? In the spirit of this painter, I, I, he asked the question, and I ask you, have you seen yourself lately? Because sometimes we seem to forget how we really look from time to time. Because even the best of us, we all fall short of the glory of God, don't we? Baby, it don't matter how your platform looks, how your portfolio looks, your penthouse, your purse, or your pedigree looks, baby. From time to time, your stuff stinks too. Because we all sin Still, and I'm equal opportunity this morning. I don't care how young you are, how many degrees you got, baby, you don't know it all. And on the flip side, I don't care how old or how seasoned you may be. You ain't got no excuse to be rude. You ain't got all the answers yourself. Look here. Hear me when I say this, family. We all sin still. We all come up short. And according to Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. So for us, justice looks like this. Justice for us, it dictates that we all deserve death. Death is what we all deserve. But I am so grateful to God this morning that God has decided to give us all mercy. Because, mer y'all don't know when to shout, y'all. Because mercy dictates that we don't get what we do deserve. Again, I ask the question, have you seen yourself lately? Have you smelled the stuff you be stepping in, okay? Do you know that you ain't got it all together? Thank God that God doesn't give us justice for our own deeds. Thank God he gives us mercy, giving us, not giving us the things that we do deserve. I thank God for mercy. And from the cross... From the cross, family, we're all given one of Scripture's most beautiful, most powerful, and most compassionate examples of mercy than you will ever read in all of the texts. See, these last several weeks, we've been learning the final lessons from our Savior while he's been dying on the cross. Now, what hasn't been mentioned is that he wasn't hanging up there alone. I haven't talked about that the last several weeks. Because, see, Jesus hung right there on the cross between two bodies. One on his right and one on his left. He hung between two thieves, y'all. One on his right and one on his left. He, he, he hung between two men convicted of grand larceny. One on his right and the other one on his left. And stay with me. And watch this. Both men, they have stories. Both men have histories. Both men have backgrounds. As a matter of fact, apocryphal scholars discovered the names of the thieves who were hanging beside him. The one on his right named Dismas and the one on his left named Gestus. We don't know what they stole or who they stole from or what they got caught up in. All we know is that they deserve to be up there hanging beside Jesus. One on his right and one on his left. And culture demanded that they both deserve death. Now, what's interesting to note is this, that if you read the same biblical account in the Gospel of Matthew, right there in chapter 27, verse 44, write that down, go back and check it and prove it to me if it's something different. What's not mentioned is that in that same account in Matthew, both thieves were mocking Jesus. 
Both of them were insulting Jesus. Both of them, y'all. Go back and read it. However, in just a few moments, something changed in Dismas, who hung on the right side. Because see, by the time we reach the Gospel of Luke and, reach, and read Luke's detailed account, he ain't mocking Jesus anymore. He's believing in Jesus now. While Gestus on the left is still insulting Christ, Dismas now opens his mouth to shut him up. I really wonder as I studied this text, what exactly did Dismas see that made him change his mind about the man that hung on his left side? What did he hear that made him change his approach to the Savior dying beside him on his left? What did he see? What did he hear? I, 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 I argue to myself, and I argue and present to all of you, maybe, maybe he saw the man who once had a withered hand now lifting up his healed hand in protest of this death that was taking place in front of him. Or, or, or maybe he heard the cries of the woman who bled for 12 long years who's now crying out for her dying Savior right there on the cross. Or maybe he saw the once childless mother from Nain who is being literally held up by her son that just a few pages ago had resurrected this boy from death during a funeral procession. See, the Bible doesn't ha tell us what happened to this man while he hung on a cross right there, but something happened to make him change his mind from insulting Jesus to now believing in Jesus. Something happened to make Dismas believe in this Savior dying beside him on the left. And the thief on the right, hanging in the middle of his sin, he's now turning his head to his left. Looking at Jesus, saying, Jesus, you are the Son of God. I deserve this, but you, my brother, you don't. Remember me when you get to your kingdom. Remember my name when you go on to glory. Remember me when you all leave this place. And right there in the text, Jesus with nothing left to give, Jesus, he summons the strength to press his weight down on the nails in his feet. Lift himself up a little bit. Jesus, right there in that moment, he, he, he runs his spine up the splintered old wooden cross his back was pinned down to. He, he filled his lungs with just enough air to muster the phrase and look over to his right at the man dying beside him and said, my brother, today you will be with me in paradise. Y'all, yeah. yeah. Jesus gives him the most reassuring statement in all of Scripture. For in these last moments for this brother, a man who is worthy and deserving of death is now getting a passport to paradise. Right there in these, these pages right here. A man whom the last time anybody spoke over him was to give him a death sentence. And now he's been given a life sentence. A man who was judged and properly sentenced is now given mercy by Jesus the Christ. Family, hear me. This, this is what Christ came to do. This is what he came to do. But let's not overlook what prompted this man's paradise reservations, okay? Because remember, it was two thieves that hung on a cross beside Jesus. One on his right and another on his left. But only one was granted access to paradise. Only one was granted access to an everlasting life. What was the difference, if I may ask the question, 
between the two men who were both found guilty, yet only one of them got access to paradise. Here's the answer right here. Only one of them confessed. Two brothers hanging on the cross. One got access to paradise because only one confessed. Hear me today, family. Confession as a subject matter for discernment. Confession is more than admitting to something that you are accused of in a legal sense, okay? It goes beyond the accusation. I need you all to follow me when I say this, all right? Because the accusation alone ain't enough. And trust me, I, I watch enough legal shows and crime dramas with Lady T to know that somebody can have, the law can build a case against you all day long. Trust me, I watch enough Law and Order SVU, enough First 48, baby. I've seen the, almost the whole season of The Wire, y'all. I, I, look, I, I know enough. Uh, the accusation ain't enough. The law can build a case up against you. But sometimes that case won't stick unless you find yourself with a confession from the guilty party. Baby, sometimes we'd be watching the first 48 and they will hold a suspect in the interrogation room for hours and hours. And the whole time, when they know they did it, the whole time they have been there singing a song like Shaggy. They said, we caught you red-handed. Wasn't me. We caught you with the gun, brother. It wasn't me. We saw you right there. It wasn't me. He's singing, hey, you ain't no face, no case. Look here, if you ain't got no accusation or no confession, you ain't got a case. It's not until they confess that the case is finally closed in a legal sense. However, this kind of confession I'm talking about this morning, this one is a little different. Because God is not accusing you of anything because God already knows what happened. God already knows what you did. He already knows what you got yourself. God is aware of everything you think, say, or do. God knows your motives and your agenda. No matter how hard you try to portray something else in the face of other people. There are no accusations here. Baby, you did it. Straight up, you did it. So this confession, it refers to the acknowledgement of your sin to God. Whether they are acts of disposition, whether they are acts that you just straight up did, or dispositions of your heart, stuff you did or you just thought because of how you felt, whether they were sins of omission or commission. Baby, confession is the appeal for divine forgiveness. That's what I'm talking about today, family. Proverbs 28, 13 says this, that whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Jesus, on a cross, he honors this proverb. He extends mercy to the man on his right side, and it's prompted by his confession. And it amazes me, family, that the Bible is so intentional to share this example of confession just moments before Jesus takes his final breath on earth. And I believe it's done for the purpose of showing the power of confession to the Lord. Because, see, something happens in the moment of confession to God. Something happens when you confess. It's, y'all, it's bigger than the opportunity to go to paradise, okay? Okay. Because, see, confession comes with no guarantees, truly. Follow the text. This man is hung on the right side of Jesus and confessed his sin to Jesus. And all he asked for was that Jesus remember him. He didn't ask for paradise. Make sure, read your Bible. Make sure it say the same thing I read. He didn't ask to go to paradise. He just said, Jesus, remember me. I'm going to confess with no guarantee in mind. It was Jesus who went the extra mile and gave it to him. Paradise just happened to be the icing on the cake. And baby, I love icing is good, but the cake is what I want. There's there's more to this moment than just the opportunity to go into to paradise. There's more to confession than just going to paradise, family. And you must understand what a confession of your sin to God, what it means to you. It's absent of the prospect, absent of the prospect of mercy, family. The Bible, the Bible gives us this confession just before his crucifixion to encourage us to confess before God. We got to do some dirty work for the dirty deeds we've done. Okay. 
So now the question that we ponder this morning is this. Why are we encouraged to confess? Why are we encouraged to go to God, to tell God what we've done? Since he already knows. What, why do we go through this routine? Why are we doing it at all? What does confession do for us in the moment that is more meaningful and more than just hoping to get mercy? Let me tell you. The first thing that I found in studying this text and studying this story is this, that confession, it establishes authority. Can y'all help me preach? Somebody look at somebody else and say, it establishes authority. Somebody type that in a chat space. It establishes authority. And we find it right here in verses 39 to 40. I'm going to show it to you. Because, see, your confession is meaningful. It's meaningful acknowledgement that you are not in control. That's what your confession says. It establishes authority. Can I say it another way? I got to make sure I get the people in the back. Baby, in case you don't know, you don't run this. Okay? That's, that's all I'm trying to say. Because, see, watch this. When we follow the dialogue between the dying thieves, guess this. He, he mocked Jesus, saying, if you are the Messiah, save yourself and us. He doesn't fully believe that Jesus is who he is, who he said he is. He doesn't, he hasn't bought into it. As a matter of fact, he, to go further, he's actually comfortable in the actions and the decisions that put him up there on a the cross anyway. He's not concerned if Jesus is the Messiah, but if he is the Messiah, he just wants to use him as a way out. I don't believe in you, but if you are who you say you are, go on and get a brother off this cross. This is what he's saying as he's looking at this dying cross. He's okay with the stuff he's been doing all his life. He's comfortable hanging around in his sin. He didn't believe who Jesus is. He said, but brother, if you can do it, go on and do it for you and for me too. Looking for a way out. He's literally, watch this family, he's literally hanging next to Jesus. And hanging next to Jesus has him feeling like he's equal to Jesus. Let me tell y'all, hanging in sin will have you feeling like you are equal to God. Let me paint the picture for you. Because see, our sovereign God created us to listen to him and to follow him and to follow his will. God created us to listen to him and follow his will. But when we sin and when we engage in sin, when we get into some mess, we are communicating a message to God that we know what's best for us. We will do what we want to do when we want to do it and how we want to do it and not submit to a higher authority. That's what we're saying to God whenever we willingly dive into sin, that we are on equal footing with you, God. You think you know what's best for me? I know what's best for me. That's why I'm going to do what I want to do right now. Baby, look, 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 look. And, and, and when we sin, we are telling God, this is what I want to do for my life, and I know what's best for my life. My pastor puts it this way, that this acronym of sin, sin is this, self-inflicted nonsense. You like that, don't you? That's all right. Look, look, look. Sin, stay with me. Sin sends a message to God that you want to be in control, that you have authority over your own life. And this is not so. So whenever we confess our sins, family, we are aligning ourselves with the position of the thief on the right and the position that God puts us in and wants us to be in. That's what we're doing when we confess. Dismas, he interrupts the insults of the thief on the left. He says, Gestus, don't you fear God? Don't you respect him? Don't you know who he is? Don't miss this. His confession from hanging on the cross on the right side, it begins with him reverencing the authority that Jesus has in his life. His confession says, Jesus, you are God and I am not. I might be hanging next to you. I, I might be beside you. I might be equal to you, but I am not equal to you. I will submit to your authority, God. I will submit to your authority, my Lord. I, I, I might be hanging but you, beside you, but you, are, you have authority over me. 
because only one of us has the power to wake me up every single morning. While at the same time trying to tell the son to clock in for work and not be late. Only one of us can do that. Only one of us has the power to keep me in my right mind, especially when I'm five minutes from losing it because the way these people on my job are working, they about five seconds from getting Only one of us can keep me in my right mind when I'm about to lose it. Only one of us has the power to keep me together when all hell has broken loose in my life and I'm completely out of control. My confession articulates that, God, you are in control. And I am not in control. And I am okay with that. When we confess to God, when we confess, it's beyond just going to paradise. This happens for us in the middle, but it goes further, you all. Because the second thing that I notice is that our confession of our sin, it reveals revelation. Right there in verse 41. Help me preach that. So to look at somebody and say, it reveals revelation. And it reveals reflection found in our revelation. Because sometimes in the middle of our sin family, we're going to learn something if we turn to God. And we're going to learn something if we reflect while we're in the middle of our mess. It reveals reflection, family. Confession takes us to a place where we reflect on where we messed up. <laughs> with the hopes that we can learn from how we messed up. Let me show you the reflection in this text. In verse number 41, the thief on the right, he says, look, bro, guess this. We messed up, and we are getting what we deserve. But this man is innocent. This man is looking over his own life and taking inventory of all his mess-ups, all his mistakes, and all his missteps. And in the meantime, he's also drawing a comparison of his life to the life of Jesus. He's changing right before our eyes, family. Reflection, it has a way of causing you to retract that finger that's always pointing at somebody else and bringing that thing on back, okay? That's what reflection does for us. Stay with me. Because I, I have to ask this question right now. Like, do, do you know anybody who goes through life and makes everything seem like it's all about them? Y'all know anybody like that? Now, look, they sit beside you right now. Don't, don't look at them. Just maintain eye contact with me, okay? Blink twice if you need some help, okay? Look, look. look they're, they're, well, some of us know people in our lives that they make everything always about them. That, that it's always about them. And whenever anything goes wrong in life, it's never their fault. Do y'all know anybody like that? Y'all stop looking around. Stay with me, family. Stay with me. Reflection will allow you to stop pointing the finger at somebody else all the time and start to look at what you did and how you got up here. When you confess, you take a good look at what you did and what you said and the part that you played. Since you want to act like it's all about you, look at you and all you have gotten into for just a moment. Go ahead and make it about you for a second. Go on and reflect on what you did and how you got up here on this cross. Because, see, whenever you reflect, whenever you confess, you are aligning yourself with God's desires for your life. That's what happens when you confess. And once you reflect on God's dream for your life versus the reality that you find yourself in in your life, you start looking at the two. When you start measuring them, when you start holding yourself up against the picture that God has for you, when you start reflecting on God's dream versus your reality, you notice that you are out of alignment. And you begin to change in that moment in light of everything that is right about God and wrong with you. Confession causes you to look at yourself in relationship to God and causes a change because of God. Can I say that one more time? Family, reflect, confession causes you to reflect on your relationship with God, your relationship to God, and causes a change in you because of God. Let me paint it to you this way. 
Just yesterday, my family, we were making our way into the church, and we were using the left door, the, uh, the west door, the office side door to come in the building. And if you come in there, you see that glass door, and there's a, there's a sign right there where there, it tells you, whenever you walk in here, make sure the door is shut behind you, okay? Y'all pay attention to that sign whenever you walk through, but stay with me for a second. Whenever we were walking up to the door, Corinne saw the sign. She said, Daddy, something's different about that sign. I said, what's wrong with it? She said, it just looks different. It looks like the, the color is different. Do you see the color? I said, yeah, I noticed the color. And I just kind of brushed off the comment. Lady T brushed off the comment. We just kind of walking in there. But she said, something is wrong or different about that color. As soon as we get inside the door and we turn around to make sure the door is shut behind us, we turn around and she turns around and said, hey, you see it now? The same sign on the other side? That's, that's, that's how it's supposed to look, right? That, that picture right there is a little darker than the one on the outside. I said, oh, yeah, baby, I understand. I get it. That, that's how I came out of the printer. You see, the difference between the two colors is the one on the outside had been exposed to the sun for a prolonged period of time. And because it's been exposed to the sun for such a long time, then you notice there's a change in how that thing looks. Some of y'all got it. Let me come for this side right here. Because that thing on the outside has been exposed to the sun for so long, there's a noticeable change about how it looks versus how it was when it first came out of the printer. Let me come for the rest of y'all real quick. I don't think I got everybody. Baby, whenever you are exposed to the sun for a prolonged period of time, there ought to be a noticeable change in how you look versus how you were when you first came into the world. Baby, when you first came off the printer, you may have some darkness about you. But whenever you got exposed to the sun for a prolonged period of time, things about you start to look different. Somebody here knows what I'm talking about, that you start to have joy all over your life. You start to look like you have peace about your life. You start to look like you have courage going on in your life. You start to reflect love all over your life because whenever you start to reflect, you're going to reflect the one that's casting a light on your body. And I encourage everybody, as soon as you start confessing, you start reflecting the light that's been cast on you. You got to get this in your spirit, that as you are exposed, and when you confess, then things are going to start changing right there before your eyes, and everybody can see the difference. Don't miss this family. This man is changing right in front of us because he's been exposed to the sun. This man confessed, and there's a change about him. Confession will do that for you. Yes, it will. Confession, it will establish authority. And confession will reveal reflection. And then thirdly, your confession will reconcile relationships. This is the last point and my favorite point right here. It will reconcile relationship. Help me preach one last time. Look at somebody say it's going to reconcile relationship. Yes, it will. See, see, confession reconciles relationship with God. Jesus came to earth to restore relationship with God through salvation. Okay. Now, salvation, it comes through personal confession. The confession is your communication with God. It's you talking to God. Follow the text, verse 42, verses 41 and 42, which it shares, 42, excuse me, start right there. Uh, 42 and 43 tell us that the man on the right confessed his wrongdoing on the cross. He spoke to Jesus right there in the middle of his mess. He spoke to Jesus. He said, remember, Jesus, remember me as you go into your kingdom. He looked at him and said, Jesus, remember me. He's confessing and talking to him. And Jesus looked back at him. And spoke back to him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. Y'all, before the confession, there was no relationship. After the confession, he's got a travel itinerary. Before the confession, he was doomed to eternal prison. But after the confession, he was destined for paradise. Before the confession, he was calling him everything but a child of God. But after the confession, he was calling him the son of man. Baby, his confession, it opened the door for communication. His communication with the Lord. He talked to the Lord and the Lord talked back. 
And baby, this morning, I wish I had somebody here who had a he talked back to me kind of testimony. That whenever you cried out to God, God talked back to you. And when he talked back to you, he gave you a solution to your problem. I wish I had somebody who knows that whenever you cry out to the Lord and talk to the Lord, every time the Lord is going to respond and he's going to go the extra mile for you. And not only will he talk back, he went beyond what he wanted and gave him what he needed. I'm preaching this better than y'all getting it this morning because watch this. Don't forget this family. Don't forget he confessed and only asked God to remember him. But Jesus did so much more than that because Jesus gave him a first-class seat traveling beside him where he was going on off to paradise. He said, I I'm not just going to remember you, but I'm going to see you all the time because you're going where I'm going. You're going to the house with many mansions where the streets are paved with gold. You're going to paradise. I'm not just going to remember you, brother. We're going to be talking because you're going with me. Look, Jesus heard the petition of this convicted criminal, and then he makes this unprecedented move that instead of condemnation, he gives him salvation and then furthers with destination. God, huh. he gives mercy to a man who didn't deserve it. And it's all, it's all warranted by his authentic confession. Because see, family, I'm going to end right here. You must understand that your confession, it opens the door for your restored relationship with the Lord. And nothing is more meaningful than your relationship with God. And once that door has been opened, you can then prepare for God to blow your mind and exceed your expectations. Because, see, God will and can go beyond just providing simply what you want. He goes beyond by providing what you need. You need grace, and confession will get you there. You need mercy, and confession will get you there. You need forgiveness, and confession will get you there. You need God's love, and confession will get you there. Confess your sins to the Lord and witness how God moves mercy in your favor. I want to close with this story right here. It's about this woman who was falling on hard times. She's working a job, a dead-end job, and barely making ends meet. So to this dead-end job, she's speeding, trying to make her way to work because she can't afford to be late any more days. But while she's speeding, she gets pulled over. The officer pulls her over and says, ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? She says, sir, I know I'm speeding. I'm trying to get to work. He says, ma'am, you were going 70 in a 20. And don't y'all start acting funny because I know some of y'all have done worse than that. Because I done seen y'all go 50 right out the parking lot. This woman was going 70 in a 50. And he said, I'm going to have to write you a ticket. And I need you to show up to court on this designated day. Well, this woman, she has to take off of work and goes to court on a designated date. She looks at the judge, and the judge looks at her. He says, ma'am, how do you plead to this, this, this uh, accusation of reckless driving? She says, I have to plead guilty because I know I was driving over the limit. I was breaking the law as the law dictates. He said, ma'am, well, as I'm looking over at your record, I see you have a clean record. You haven't been in front of me ever before. So I want to give you an easy just slap on the wrist, if that's all right with you. He, I need you to just go ahead and pay a fine of $100. But y'all, please don't forget, I told y'all the woman, she fell on hard times. She doesn't have $100 to give. And so she looks at the judge with tears just welling up in her eyes and saying, Judge, I appreciate why you reduced my sentence down to $100. But if I can be honest, I don't have $100 to give. Judge, do you mind letting me off without paying the $100 fine? The judge looked at her and said, Ma'am, I'm sorry, but the law is the law. And you cannot break the law. I cannot make the law. I just have to judge the law accordingly. And your sentence is to pay this $100 fine. She looks back at the judge, pleading her case, saying, Judge, I'm sorry, but I don't have $100 to give. Is there any 
anything that can be done. The judge once again looks at her and says, I'm sorry, ma'am, but the law is the law. I cannot break the law. I have to execute the law as the law dictates. She began crying right there in front of the judge. And the judge then pulls an, un an unprecedented move. The judge stands up. He unzips his robe. He takes it off and throws it on his chair. He then walks around from the bench and goes down to the woman. He looks at the woman. He says, lady, I'm going to help you out. He pulls out a wad of folded bills and puts it in her hand. And then he makes his way back up to the bench. He grabs his robe. He puts his robe back on, zips it up, and said, Ma'am, you have pleaded guilty to this charge of $100 of speeding. Been doing 70 in a 50. You pled guilty to this. And I understand the law is the law. You have a fine in front of you. You have to pay $100. Will you be able to pay? Because now I see there has been a development in your case. There has been something new entered into this moment. Now you have the means to pay this fine. I need you to go on, drive safely, and have a great day. Family, I know some of y'all got it, but let me come out for the rest of you all. Because see, whenever we confess our sins and plead our case to the judge, the judge then will do as Jesus has done for us. For Jesus pulled an unprecedented move. For out of eternity, he was looking down at creation. And he saw each and every one of us drowning in our sin. He saw all of us stepping in the state of sin. He looked down at us and said, they don't have the means to pay the fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip my divinity. I'm going to take off all of my godliness. I'm going to walk on down to earth. I'm going to reach down in what I have and pay the fine for you. I'm going to carry an old wooden cross up a hill called Calvary. I'm going to be hung up on a cross where they're going to hang me high and stretch me wide. And right there while I'm hanging on a cross, I'm going to look down at you, knowing that you don't have the means to pay the fine. Instead, I'm going to come out of divinity into creation and pay the fine for you. I'm going to pay it with my blood. I'm going to pay it with my hands. I'm going to pay it with my feet. I'm going to pay it for you, and I'm going to give you mercy. I know you messed up. I know you got into some stuff, but I'm going to pull an unprecedented move and give you something that you do not deserve. And I got to ask this question. Is there anybody here this morning who will praise God for the mercy that God has given you because you are getting something you don't deserve? When you look back over your life and see all the people you did wrong, all the dirt that you got into, all the stuff you stepped in. I have to dare you to stand to your feet and praise God because God has given you mercy that you don't deserve, a gift that you cannot earn, something that's going to sustain you, something that's going to keep you, something that's going to restore you. God has given us mercy and somebody ought to praise God if you're thankful for the mercy. I'm grateful for the mercy that God has given me. I'm grateful for the gift that God has given me. I'm thankful for this gift of mercy that God has blessed me with. And that gift that gift is warranted and prompted by your confession. God calls us to confess. God calls us to take the stuff that we got into, the stuff that some of us even enjoy, the mess that we find ourselves in. He says, you don't got no business holding on to that because it doesn't properly reflect me. I want you to give that stuff over and let me give you something in return. I bless you with mercy as long as you remember me and confess for me. Stand to your feet all over this place. Stand to your feet.
stand to your feet. Pray with me right now, family. God, we solicit your presence in this moment. And we thank you for this gift that you've given us that we don't deserve. This gift of mercy, God. Where you bless us in ways that are unprecedented. You do things for us that just don't make sense. But we get it. You do it because you love us the way you love us. You love us as only you can love us, oh God. And we will be nothing without your mercy in our lives. So in this moment, oh God, as we look towards you, we pray that you will empower us in a way that we will be diligent about finding you and chasing after you and God even confessing to you the stuff that we're not proud of, the stuff that we don't want to remember or reflect on, oh God, but we know it will be so much better if we let go of it and receive your gift of mercy, oh God. So bless us to have an authentic relationship, God. Don't let us play church. Don't let us play with your gift of salvation. But God, let us take it seriously. Let us receive this gift with open arms. And God, live out a life that reflects our appreciation for you, your gift of love, your gift of grace, and your gift of mercy, oh God. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's people say amen. Amen. Family, while you're resting on your feet, amen. I praise God. Again, family, I know it's a hard, hard, challenging message this morning. Because, again, it tells, uh, it, it requires that we look at ourselves for a moment. This ain't about anybody else or what somebody did to you. This is all about what you are doing. And God is saying to us, look, there is a way out. I know the stuff you've done you're not proud of. I'm not proud of it either. But God is saying to us, we say, yet I give you this gift of mercy. If you confess what you got going on to me, I will make it all go away. I will make it all make sense. I don't mind doing for you what don't make sense because I love you so much. And I need everybody here to receive this gift of love, this gift of mercy. Receive the gift of salvation that is found in Jesus Christ. Everybody, everybody needs to make this confession of none other. Confessing that Lord, that Jesus is Lord and Savior of your life. That you are nothing without him. That you tried to go about it, stuff ain't work out. But you will declare on this day, like the thief that hung on the right of Jesus. In the middle of his sin, he looked at God in the face and said, Lord, remember me. And today I want to appeal to somebody who needs to make the same confession. God, remember me. Know my name. Remember my face. And Jesus will look at you today will say today you will be with me in paradise so to my brother and my sister for no other reason right now but if you are here today and want to make a decision say Lord I want to have a relationship with you I've never come to you before but today I want to come to you today I want to have a relationship with you today I want my life to reflect your love I want you if you're here in a sanctuary tell whoever's standing beside you excuse me I need to make a decision for myself. I need to make the, important, the most important decision I will ever make in my life. I want to connect with Jesus Christ. I want him to be my Lord and my Savior. So if that's you, I need you to step out in the aisle, make your way down to this altar. Because Jesus wants to connect with you. Hallelujah. This is your moment. This is your day. I see you, my sister. I see you. I see you, my sister. Hear me today, family. I need you to connect with 
God as Lord and Savior. I need you to make a connection today. Because listen, I would love to be your pastor and would love to have you connect with this church. Mount Zion would love to be your church family. I see y'all. I see y'all. I see y'all. Y'all come on. Y'all come on. But more importantly, Jesus would love to be your Lord and Savior. Y'all come on. Y'all come on. We're going to encourage them right now. We're going to encourage them right now. This is the day to get connected. This ain't the day to play around. This is the day to leave differently than the way you came. And I want everybody, everybody to leave here connected. Everybody to be that no matter what you get into, no matter what you got going on, somebody knows your name. Somebody knows what's going on in your life. And somebody is there that you can call, that can help you, that will pray for you, to get into the foxhole with you, to go to war for you, to pray on your behalf, to go to battle for you. This is the day to get connected. God together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God for those who come yes. to join this fellowship and connect with this church. Pray with me right now, family. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for those individuals, this, your son and your daughters who come forward, who stand before you at the altar, looking to see you in a brand new way, oh God believing that you will reveal yourself in a way that even doesn't make sense to them. Lord, right now, I just want to thank you for everything that these people, your sons and daughters, have gone through and survived. God, I thank you for the hardship that they made it through, for all the things, the lies that were said about them, for all the evilness that was thrown at them, for all the broken relationships they had to fight through, for all the mess they had to put up with, that God, even in those moments, you've, you've shown yourself faithful and you've shown yourself awesome. God, I thank you for all the tears that have fallen down their cheeks because, God, you just revealed to them that even though the enemy has tried to break them, they are not broken, that, God, they are still here, they're still alive, they feel pain because they're still breathing but nothing that the enemy threw at them killed them. But God, you have built them different, that they have the capacity to stand and be victorious no matter what it is. And so God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for their testimony, for their story, and the future glory that will be revealed in their lives. God, I thank you for the decisions that have been made today to connect with you in a brand new way. And God, we believe that even in just a few more moments, yes, Lord. that today, as your scripture says, today yeah, yeah. they will be with you in paradise. That today you are saying to them that whatever you came through to get here is going to be very different than where you're going. That God, what they've gotten through, they will never have to see again. Because God, your word says that's not what paradise looks like. That tomorrow is filled with paradise. That it's filled with better days, a better tomorrow. That God, they will be looking up and never down. That God, from this moment on, they will be the head 
not the tail. That we'll be the lender and not the borrower. God, I pray right now for supernatural provision over their lives. That you will move, meet them at the point of their need where they will have not have to exhaust themselves looking for resources or looking for answers. That God, you're going to make the difference in their lives right now. God, on behalf of all the prayer requests of these here today, God, I pray you answer them. Yes. Give them clarity and give them provision. And God, bless them. Bless you. Prove to them that you are worthy of their faith. Bless. Hallelujah, God. And I pray that you do it right now. On behalf of them, their families, and all those that will run into them, oh God, that encounter them, Lord, have your way with them. Bless them and blow their minds. And I believe this. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. In the name of Jesus that we celebrate. In the name of Jesus we worship what you are about to do. As you've already shown yourself faithful in what they've gotten through. In the name of Jesus we praise you, we worship you, and we give your name glory, honor, and praise. And all those who agree with this prayer, let it be known by hollering out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God glory in this place. Somebody holler out amen in this place. I believe that God's going to make everything make sense for you. That God's going to show you something brand new. That God is going to make it happen for you. God is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Come on. Y'all come on. Y'all follow her. We're going to point y'all prayer. And for those who are connected with the church. dismissed from this place. I praise God for those who come forward that allow us to share space with them, their prayer requests with them. We cover all those who come to this family of faith, allowing us to partner with them in their prayer requests. And we celebrate those who join today, family. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because I believe that even as they leave here today, they leave here differently. They leave here with optimism. They leave here with a future. They leave here with a new faith that God is going to do for them what they pray for and do for them what they can't do for themselves. We praise God for all those who add to this number in this house we call Mount Zion. And today is a special day where we celebrate those who have come forward and completed their new member classes. And we want to formally welcome them as members of this church. And what I celebrate is this family. Um, before I announce them in their names, we're going to dismiss them in just another moment. Um, before I, I, I speak about them, what I've noticed recently is that we've had a number of young people who have been coming forward and joining the church. And what has happened is a very unique challenge for me that I have to step up to, which is not a bad thing at all, is that, you know, I, I got a, a message from our new membership team. They were saying, hey, we got a lot of kids coming. We, we need you to add a curriculum for just our students who are joining the church because what we have written for them already, you know, it's, it's maybe, it needs to be a little different so we make sure even our young lives can understand how the church works and what they expect of the church, Mount Zion, and what to believe in as they come to know God. So I, I'm, I'm, I am excited to step up to that. I got your message, even though I ain't respond right away. I got it. I got it. Yeah. And we're going to make sure this thing happens. But it is a wonderful problem for us to have, all right? So, family, I, I want to share this. Um, these names, if you are here today, I do want to celebrate these, uh, these individuals as they come up. And we want to bless them with full membership of this body of faith. So can we do this this one way, family? Hear me. Um, can we all stand to our feet? We're about to walk out the door right now. So you're about to get up and go anyway. But come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. 
as we celebrate these individuals. If they're here, y'all come on forward. I want you to join me here in this at this altar. Y'all stand beside me. We make a line facing all of our new family. Um, we will dismiss after we pray over them, and I have another announcement to share with you, all right? Um, I want to celebrate Brother Glenn Thomas. If you're here, please come forward. My brother, Brian Martin, if you are here, you come on forward. And my sister, Deja Sharp, if you're here, y'all come on. Y'all come on forward today. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Amen. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Y'all come on. Y'all come on. Slide down a little bit. Don't they look good, family? Don't they look good? And here come the youngest one right here. I tell you. I don't look at dates. That's well. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. We want to celebrate each and every one of you by presenting to you all a certificate of full membership. Oh, all right, Reverend. Okay. <laughs> this is her family right here. They're going to represent, okay? And ain't nothing. Oh, come on, you stand with me too. Come on, stay on up here with your family. Come on, come on, you stay on up here. You come. This family, typically in this moment, we do want to pair them, uh, introduce to them their care team leader. Um, all three of you just happen to have uh, Deacon Johnny Harrod Jr., Although he is not here today because he's preparing for, sir, you can stay in there. You can stay with me. Come on. Come on, Deacon Ready. Come on. You can stand on here. You can stand in that place. Stay beside them. You stand on that side. Reverend Jones, you stand on this side right here with your family. We, we want to share with you and extend full membership and rights and privileges to each and every one of you. We say that on this day, in recognition of full membership and successful completion of your new membership class here at Mount Zion Baptist Church, we pray this prayer and give you this scripture to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever, which is found in 2 Peter 3, verse 18. So to you, Sister Deja, I give this to you. To my brother Bryant, I like your name, man. I give that to you. And then my brother Glenn, we give this to you all, all right? Let's celebrate them and their full membership. Don't go anywhere. In just a moment, I want to extend a benediction to all of you as you get gather your coat and getting ready to get out the door. Two things I want to say once again: um, if you receive the text message and want to, please help us make sure our our college career and STEM fair goes off goes off well and we need your help so please partner with us if you didn't get a text just go on our homepage, um www.mountzionjoliet.org click on the link and fill that out all right one last announcement that comes by way of somber news family i solicit your prayers because uh, unfortunately family our mount zion family has suffered a loss as of this morning um sister edna jones has transitioned this morning and so we want to pray for my sister Angie. We want to pray for the entire family. Uh, Sharon, pray for Michael, uh, Collins. We want to pray for everybody and cover them. Details have not been provided as of yet when a homegoing service will take place. This is a very new transition. And we don't need to know everything that's happened. We just need to know that it's our time to pray and cover our family. So pray and cover our family. Amen. Amen. All right, family, in that spirit of family, let us now find a neighbor to our left or our right. Or you may look at our new family up here and let's share in our Ubuntu benediction. Y'all know I'm all about community. I'm all about family. So let us now welcome our family and tell them this. Tell them, neighbor, I am because we are. And we are because God is. Look at them and say, you are not alone. Never, never, never. Never alone, but God is with you, and so am I. Tell them, neighbor, I love you, and there ain't a thing you can do about it. Hallelujah. Hug that neighbor. God bless you all. Go in peace. May the Lord go with you.